I'm not a jogging person, jogging bottoms person. Does that make sense? Um. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly reading vlog and I feel a bit slumpy. I'm not gonna lie. Last week was hard. Like I feel like I've been building up to a reading slump for the last couple of weeks. I just haven't felt that like want to sit there and read a book. That's not saying I haven't been enjoying the books that I've been reading because I have, but I just haven't felt the yes let's read this book motivation. Originally this vlog was going to be a let's cram in as many April reads as I can from my TBR because I've only finished two books off that TBR. So I definitely need to make some progress with it. However, thinking about it, that's not going to help this mood. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go with the flow. So a book that I am in the middle of that I do hope to try and finish this week is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I started this last week. I'm on chapter 16, page 132. I am enjoying this one, but not as much as I thought I was going to. I'm not going to say much more than that in case I don't pick it up this week. I may take it to work with me today. I'm on a 12 hour night shift. So this would be an easier one to take with me because of the short chapters, but we'll see. I don't know because I'm feeling a little bit disappointed. Like I love parts of this book and then other parts I'm just not connecting to. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this book. A book that I am contemplating picking up this week though is Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. This is the second book in The Blade itself. No, I keep saying that. In the First Law trilogy, the first book was The Blade Itself. This was kindly loaned to me by Eric, so thank you so much. And I'm really kind of feeling like carry on on with this series. It would be really nice to read it in time for the Catch Up Book Club live show, which is hosted by Becca, who is the one running this readathon of reading Joe Abercrombie books and the First Law trilogy. So I would kind of like to read this one. I am in the mood for it. So I feel like out of these two, I'm more likely to take this one to work actually, because I don't know, I'm feeling this one more. So that may happen. However, I would also like to read Throne of Glass, my reread of that, the book is up there and I can't bother to get it. As much as I've got all these reading plans, this weekly vlog is actually going to be rather short because at the end of this week, I am going to New York for a holiday and I'm very excited. But that does mean that this vlog is going to be stopping on a Thursday because that's when I'm then going to be going off and doing all of that stuff. We'll talk about that closer to the time. So I don't know actually how much reading we're going to fit into this vlog. We're going to see and because of the mood that I'm in I could end up picking up something completely different that I haven't mentioned that isn't on my TBR at all because that's just the mood that I'm in. So we'll see. That was it. That was the start of this update, but I wanted to start it now because it is going to be a shorter vlog. It's only going to be like a half week vlog or just under a week. I hope you're all doing very well. Let me know what you've been up to and what you are currently reading. Um, but yeah, I really am battling a reading slump at the minute and I just don't know what I feel like picking up. Like, I don't know. I've been feeling like picking up Throne of Glass, so I think I might do that, but that's going to be my at-home book because I don't want to take that hard book out because it's the beautiful new ones. So I need to decide on a book to take out with me, which is mainly only for work because the next couple of days I'm not leaving the house. <laughs> I'm being a homebody. I've got some filming and editing plans that I want to do. Wednesday? What am I doing? I've got some stuff. I think I'm going out a little bit that day, but I don't know whether I'll get much reading done. And Thursday I'm busy, so we'll see. Is it Thursday that I'm busy? Or is this vlog finishing on the Friday? I actually don't know. Basically, I have a hospital appointment at the end of this week, and after the hospital appointment, we're then flying off to New York. Well, the next morning. Oh, okay, right. So technically this vlog could finish Friday. Friday morning. So we'll see. That might that might happen. The new weekly vlog is definitely going to start on a Friday, but we'll see what happens then then. Okay, well that just threw everything that I said out the window. Welcome to the vlog. I feel like we know it's going to be a bit chaotic and all over the place because that's just, that's just the mood that I'm in at the minute. I just can't seem to settle on what I want to read, what I want to do. We'll see, we'll see. Hopefully this mood kind of calms down and settles, but um, yeah, definitely the two books that I'm thinking about for this week is A Thousand Ships and Before They Are Hanged. We'll just see what one I end up taking to work. Honestly, I'm leaning towards this one. Um, and then I 100% am, as of how I'm feeling now, going to be reading Throne of Glass because 
that's a comforting reread, I know what to expect and I feel like that's going to kick me out of this weird reading funk that I'm in. So then hopefully when we're packing for New York, which obviously you're going to have to help me with, as in I'm going to be talking to you while I pack because I find it really boring otherwise. We're going to be packing some of the books so hopefully some of my April TBR will get packed. I've got one book in particular that I've been saving so we'll see. Anyway that's the start of this weekly reading vlog. I hope you're all okay and um, hopefully this mood settles and we get some good reading done. That is the plan but as it is right now I need to eat some breakfast and then me and my brother are popping out to the town for some lunch and having a little wander around so I need to stop talking and get on with my day and I'll catch up with you probably tomorrow with what I took to work tonight. It's gonna be a long day. earlier than what I wanted to be up considering that I stayed up for the whole night at work um, and didn't get home till gone seven and it's now only half past one and I've already had a bath and chilled and everything because I just cannot sleep during the day it just doesn't work that's just the way it is but thankfully that was my last ever night shift which is amazing and I never have to worry about the fact that I'm going to be exhausted for a whole week while I try and do these night shifts because I just can't sleep during the day. So that was absolutely amazing. It was really fun last night just chilling with my friends and we baked some pastries and played some board games and stuff and it was just absolutely lovely. Really, really enjoyed it. I did take a book to work and I decided to actually go with A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes and I'm pleased I did because I really do want to get this book finished um, and I didn't want to leave it. If I leave it for the rest of this week because I am off for the next like 12-ish days then I know that it's just gonna bother me that I've still got it sat there unread and I'm not gonna look forward to picking it up so I was like you know what the best thing to do is take it to work. I have actually made a lot of progress. I've only got a tiny bit left. I'm up to chapter 37, page 276. So I think I've got about 40, oh, I looks about 60 pages left, which isn't that bad. I probably am gonna finish this up today. I have really mixed thoughts about this book though. I think if you are new to Greek mythology and you want to get into it and you're a bit intimidated by the classics like the Iliad and the Odyssey, this is an amazing place to start because what Natalie Haynes does is retell pretty much the Iliad, but from the perspectives of the women. But they do it in such a way where everything is explained. The reasons for the war, the lead up to it, the way it impacts different people in different ways. Like it really is a very good retelling. You're just not having to see it from the men's perspective. However, something that I'm starting to get a bit frustrated by is a perspective that is repeating in this, which is Penelope. Now, Penelope is the wife of Odysseus who goes to Troy, does the war for 10 years, However, in the Odyssey, Odysseus is waylaid on his way home by another 10 years. And Penelope's perspective is just telling that story, which in itself is absolutely fine. It's a retelling of the Odyssey as well. So you've got both books combined. However, this was meant to be about the women. This was meant to be the women's perspective on things and we have Penelope writing Odysseus letters and all the letters are doing is telling him the stories that she has heard about him on this adventure and so it's just telling us the things that Odysseus is getting up to. But it doesn't make sense because 
why aren't we seeing what Penelope has been having to deal with in this very long period of time? But what I don't get is if this is meant to be such a powerful feminine novel where we're getting the female perspective on things, why are we not learning about the things that Penelope is having to deal with during this time that Odysseus is away? Because she does have a whole story to her about her patience, her cunning, how she deals with all the men that are clamouring around because they obviously Odysseus has been away for such a long time they now want her and the land and the titles and everything that comes with it and she's having to fend them off and the way that she does that like it's a very powerful story but we're not seeing any of that we're just seeing her get frustrated with all these tales about what Odysseus is doing and the fact that he's not coming home to his wife and child and that's it we're not getting the rest of who Penelope is and the things that she does we're just being told Odysseus's story and it just doesn't sit right with the rest of this the rest of this is the women's perspective you're really getting their feelings the way they see everything that's going on the impact that the war has had on them you're also getting perspectives from the goddesses which is really good because it shows how petty they are which in the Iliad is also portrayed really well in the Iliad you do get perspectives from the gods and goddesses and you see how petty they are how little they value human life and I think Natalie Haynes has really good job of also showing that in this so it's really good in those like if you're needing that step into mythology I think this is fantastic for it but I just don't feel like Penelope's perspective adds to the feminine part of this book and instead is giving Odysseus this massive part in a story where it was not meant to be about the men like the whole point of this book is going the men have been told their stories so many times that it's ridiculous. Now it is time for the women and their voices to be heard. We don't need the stories of the men because we've all heard them. I feel like that then gets lost with Penelope's perspective because all we're hearing about is Odysseus and the things that he's up to. So it just doesn't work. For me personally, I feel like it doesn't work. Um, the rest of it, I like some parts of this I already know, uh, the majority of this I already know, um, I feel like for me personally I'm at that point now because I know the basis of the story, I want to see more in depth about the characters, this doesn't do that, it's just giving you the facts of what happened according to the myths and telling it from the female perspective. So like I say, a really good starting point, but not if you're looking to get more deeper into the mythology. Saying that, there has been a couple of perspectives that I didn't know that they played such a part within it um, and it's been really nice exploring those but it, it's few and far between. Overall I like it but I feel like it misses the mark a little bit. Partly because I've read so much Greek myth that this, I think, if I'd started out reading this book I would have preferred it so much more and got so much more from it but also like I say the parts of Penelope and that Odysseus story it's not his perspective but it might as well be for everything that we're getting about him I don't know it's just just annoying I mean this is really good to let me know what I'm in for when I read the Odyssey which is great and that's what I recommend this book for if you're wanting to read the Iliad or the Odyssey but are intimidated and you want like a foundation to know what happens so it's easier to follow this is great for that but I also feel like it doesn't fit the whole point of this which was giving the female their voices and with Penelope you haven't you've silenced her by getting her just to tell Odysseus's story rather than her own so that's frustrating so yeah that's that I'm gonna I am gonna finish this today though I'm really happy that I'm towards the end of it and I, I do stand by what I said that this is a really good stepping point into those books so I still recommend it 100% it's just I feel like we've just missed the mark a little bit with Penelope's repeating perspective so that's a bit of a shame I am however really feeling the urge to pick up the throne of glass like I'm really really feeling it so I think what I'm going to do today is finish a thousand ships I've got some editing to do and then I'm going to curl up and read throne of glass and do my reread of that I've planned out what I'm taking on holiday books wise so I've got that I'm not taking all of those one of the books which is the one that I was contemplating bringing to work I'm going to take that on holiday because it's a bigger chunkier book and one other one um, and that will be my holiday books I think I always take loads and then I never read as much as I think I'm going to and New York's definitely going to be more of a busy outing holiday so I'm probably not going to get as much time to read so I'm not going to bring loads 
So that was really good and decided to do that rather than starting another book, especially because I don't think that I would have time to finish before they are hanged in this vlog. Whereas next week's vlog is going to be the New York one and it's going to carry over a couple of extra days once I'm back. So that's going to be long enough to finish this. I mean, I know I don't have to finish a book in one vlog, 100%. Thousand Ships is proof of that because I started it last week. But I kind of want to be able to just sit down and immerse myself in it and just have fun. And I have an eight hour flight. So guess what's getting read on that flight? So yeah, so I'm going to take that one on holiday and another book. And yeah, that's it really today. I just need to get, like I said, that editing done. I'm going to read and that's about it because I think I've got loads of energy right now but I have only napped on and off since I've been back home like I got back home at 7 and I was up at 9 45 <laughs> I, I forced myself to go back to sleep but I kept waking up and then eventually gave up at like 12 so it's it's always a hard one during the day I, I'm such an early bird like I love getting up early and I'm so productive when I first wake up in the morning it's great so I know, give myself about three hours, I'm going to crash so hard. So I haven't got any plans for today, really. And then the rest of the week, I've got a lot. But I'll probably update you as we go. But yeah, I'm so excited to do my reread of Throne of Glass. I've been wanting to do it for so long. And I have been putting that book off for this week. Because I knew I don't want to take it out anywhere. And it's just, it's going to be so good. I'm going to be annotating and having fun. And it's just, yes. I know it's not for everyone, but I love that book. Anyway, right, I am rambling. I actually need to sort out some flowers because my friends, they bought me some flowers because it was my last shift working with both of them. And it's just, ah, oh, it was so lovely and so sad, but it was, it was lovely, lovely time. Um, but yeah, okay, right. I'm rambling a lot because I am so tired. Let's stop the tired rambles, get on with this day. And I'm probably going to talk to you tomorrow about the fact that I'm rereading Throne of Glass and how much I'm loving it. But yeah, okay. See you then. morning it is time to pack this suitcase which I've made a little bit of start I've got like four tops packed and I'm trying to be a bit neater and actually roll in my clothes compared to last time I did some packing where I literally threw it in we're trying it's probably not going to last long just to preface that the light in here is going to be awful because the window is behind me but this is the easiest place for me to pack <laughs> Um, and I will be talking to you about the books that I have finished and been reading but I won't be holding them up because I do need to get this packing done so a Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I did finish it and I liked it. It was fine. It, My thoughts on it haven't really changed. Um, it's one of those books that I think is good to get into Greek mythology. Um, if you're interested in what happened with the Iliad and the Odyssey, but you're a little bit intimidated to read those actual books, this is a really good one to get you introduced to what is going on. However, it reads very much like a collection of short stories and as a result some of the short stories you just don't get on with as well as others. I stand by what I said about the Penelope perspective, I just feel like we didn't need that when we were just telling Odysseus's story which was really frustrating. However, at the very last letter that she writes to Odysseus she does talk about the things that she went through while he was away, the weaving that she did. I just wish that that would have been bigger, that that would have been expanded upon because otherwise we didn't need the rest of it. Like we didn't tell Achilles story and things like this, like in the greatest detail, like we did with Odysseus. So that kind of felt really weird and I didn't get on with it. 
At the end of the book, Natalie Haynes does go into the different places where she got her inspiration from, so it's not just the Iliad and the Odyssey, but a few others which I haven't read, which I'd be very interested in reading. Um, but overall, this definitely wasn't my favourite Greek myth that I've ever read. It was good, interesting, a good place to start, but that is literally it. So yeah, unfortunately not the, not my favourite, but I am pleased I read it, if that makes sense. Packing wise, it's actually going to be really warm in New York, which I'm very excited about. It's actually going to be like 17 degrees, but it is going to be raining on a few of the days. So I need to go get a raincoat. That's something I need to do today. I also need to pick up a prescription and I can't find the adapter, you know, the plug adapters. Can't find that. Don't know where it's gone. I know I have one couldn't tell you where it is and I know my partner has one but he's notorious at forgetting things so I may just go out and buy another one just in case. We're, we're gonna be honest, underwear and socks they just get chucked in. I am not sorting that out, I know that there's enough and that's all that matters. I'm also packing in clothes for the flight because where what's actually happening is Friday I have a hospital appointment and then after the hospital appointment, we're going to the airport straight away. And then Saturday, we're flying out and that's gonna be an early flight. I think our flight is at eight in the morning. So for the first time ever, I'm actually gonna be wearing some really, really comfy clothes on the flight, which I'm quite impressed with myself, but I am packing it in this suitcase because I don't need it until Saturday. So not that you even needed to know that, but basically I have my partner's hoodie, which he doesn't wear, which he gave to me. Can tell the folding of clothing's going not great and i actually have some jogging bombs which is like my first pair of jogging bombs since i did pe at school so i'm quite impressed with myself but it's this really nice yellow and it's really fluffy inside like really fluffy and that's just going to be for the flight there and the flight back which i don't know how i feel about that because i'm not a jogging person jogging bottoms person does that make sense um, so I'm really not, but it is comfy, so we're going to give it a try. And these were really cheap. I picked them up from Primark for like £7, so that's not bad. Before I go on to talking about the next book though, I'm taking one of these bags on holiday, but I have no idea what bag I'm going to take. I think I might decide on the colour once I've bought my raincoat, because if I end up going for a pink raincoat, then I think a pink bag would be a bit too much. But if I go for a different colour raincoat, then I could go with my pink bag. I don't know, but I loved this bag, as you can tell, because I have it in two colours. So one of these will get packed, but I don't know which one, so I can't pack that yet, the realisation. But I did say that I was going to be starting Throne of Glass. Hang on, let me get the dust jacket. Ta-da! Very nice, very happy with this edition. I want to get this finished today. That's when I need to get this finished, because ideally, if I can finish up the vlog tomorrow, then that means tomorrow evening I can get it edited, it's uploaded, and as much as I am back for the Friday that this vlog will be going up, it will make my life so much easier to not be stressing about trying to get this final edited and uploaded when I get back from the holiday and before I have work. Like, it would just be so much easier if it's all done. So we're going to try and see what happens. I am on chapter 28, page 211, so I am halfway through, which is really good. And I'm enjoying my reread of this. It is so much fun. I'm going to talk through the tabs quickly because I don't know why I should. You can, you can see it a little bit. I am tabbing little things. Only three things at the minute. Is it three things or four things? Okay, so the tabbing system. We have dark purple. This is for the murders that are happening within this book. So Throne of Glass by itself is a YA fantasy, extremely tropey read. We have Selena who is an assassin and she has spent a year at the salt mines um, in slavery. She has then been approached to take part in this competition to become the king's champion. So she accepts because then she'll get her freedom at the end of it. It's a very simple YA, there's some trials going on. However, part of the trials some of the champions are being killed off and as much as I know what's happening I am still having a lot of fun tabbing it and seeing all of that progress as we go. I'm then using this lighter like grey colour, you really can't tell the difference between these, um, but it's more of a grey blue and this is for moments of real deep sadness because Selena deals with a lot. One from being in the salt mines, two from the events that led up to her being in the salt mines and three for something else which as a reader who's read this series many times I know exactly what it is and it is a little bit predictable 
but also from something from her past from way beforehand and just all the guilt and everything that comes alongside that. So I decided to tab some of that. I haven't done as much of that. Then I'm going for this darker blue for things that are foreshadowing to the bigger plot of the series and potentially connections with other books in the series. So Sarah J Mars has done three series, two of which are ongoing. So we have Throne of Glass, which is her first series, which is completed. And then we have A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is kind of starts off as a Beauty and the Beast retelling and then expands from the first book. And then we have her adult fantasy series, which is Crescent City, starting with House of Earth and Blood. I really like all of her books. I can't help it. I'm absolute trash for her. They do interconnect, like all of these books interconnect in different worlds, which does get explained. And you're actually seeing how far ahead Sarah J Mars planned this. And that's what this entails, like the later plot for this book series but also possible connections with other book series and then I have another lighter blue for quotes that I love the usual one um, and so there's been a couple many surrounding books because Selena loves to read um, and that's it really I'm just enjoying this I think this might be my like fifth or sixth time reading this book I've read it so much I know exactly what happens but I really am enjoying my reread of this I used to reread it pretty much every year or at least every other year I didn't reread it last year so it has been two years I read it I read it in 2021 the last time um, and I'm just really enjoying my reread I really do I find that every year I read one of the series of books and this year is Throne of Glass, which next year is gonna be preparing for Crescent City 3 coming out and I will 100% be booking a day off work so I can sit at home and read that because I'm sad like that. But yeah, this is so good, it's so much fun. I just, I love my reread of it all for the flight love it I just I have to read it I love it it's really fun and the first three books very much are YA fantasy 100% a bit like the typical YA you've got your love triangle you've got your trials you've got all those typical things that came out at that time which was like 10 years ago but I love it I really do love it and it's it probably is because of that nostalgia because I started reading this series once I think it was like the second book came out or something and then I've been following it di diligently ever since then so it's a lot of nostalgia for me okay aha jeans you know what this is again the first pair of jeans that I've owned in like years absolute years because to be honest I mainly only wear skirts and dresses when I'm not at work because I have to wear trousers at work um but I've really loved these so they're coming on holiday as well this is going to be my hand luggage bag. Um, I actually think I'm going to keep that one. I won't pack this one. I was thinking of packing this one, but the toiletries, I need to wait until the actual day before I can take them. Books, I need to settle on the books. And there's a few bits, so I might just keep that as my bag with me while I'm at the hospital and then going straight to the airport. Keep that out because it can pack more in it. Um, because I think my partner may be taking the suitcase to the airport before me um, because he's going to the airport while I'm in my usual hospital appointment, which would be great if he does. But we'll see, because it depends how much he decides to pack and bring. Again, not that you needed to know any of this, but it is what it is. Okay, so I think we're down to the last few bits. So I need my straighteners. These are my travel straighteners. I actually have much nicer ones at home, but I'm always terrified that they're gonna get broken or lost or something, so travel straighteners tool belt for my jeans I really like this it's like clear but iridescent it's just fun okay but time to pack the books so the books that I'm taking on holiday we have the traitor Seth Dickinson I really cannot wait to start this series and if I like it I may treat myself to the American versions of the books because their cover is much nicer if you're in the USA then it is the traitor Barrel Comoron is the series title here it's just the traitor this is an old fantasy series but Reagan over at Peru's project was talking about this series and it is a political fantasy and I'm so excited to start this one it's kind of like if Tyrion Lannister was a female and she was the star of the show what would happen 
um, I'm really excited that sounds absolutely amazing so yeah I really cannot wait but I'm also going to be taking Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie this is the second book in the first law series and Eric's lent this one to me so I'm very grateful to continue I just don't know what one I'm going to pack because one of these is going to come to my hospital appointment. So you'll have to see next week's vlog for to see which one I choose. One's going to get packed in here, one is going to come with me to the hospital appointment. I will take both of these on holiday. Normally I would bring a third book and I may because I have an eight hour flight and my hospital appointment normally takes about six hours. So considering I've got an eight hour flight there and an eight hour flight back, that's 16 hours plus a six hour hospital appointment that's 22 hours of reading already that I'm definitely going to be getting done in this holiday so this may not be big enough I may pack an extra book but I have no idea what one so but these are the two that are definitely going but I do just need to decide what one is going in the suitcase and what one is going to stay with me for the hospital appointment and hand luggage we're going to see about that and I think that's everything actually the last couple bits is just my journal but I might journal tonight so I might not pack that straight away debating if I bring my switch I haven't actually played Animal Crossing in absolutely ages so I don't know I feel like it'd be something really easy but I would only really play it when I'm on the airplane and I would rather read so that's a question mark and that's it oh wait sunglasses but yeah so that's nice so I have a whole empty part of this suitcase which is perfect because I do plan on doing some book shopping out there but I think my next point of call to be honest for today is going to be tidying up the mess that I've made and then going out and getting that raincoat so then I can decide on the final pack my raincoat potentially actually do I keep that out because it's been raining a lot here and I think that's it this was a lot nicer I've been like just chatting the whole time I'm probably going to edit this down quite a lot because we were at like 20 minutes <laughs> and you don't need that much rambling and some of it really was just nonsense I feel like I've done a much nicer job the last time I filmed a packing video I was literally throwing things in left right and center it was a Q&A video as well um, and this time I've actually tried sort of folding my clothes up which is a first for me I'm not gonna lie um, my partner will be proud <laughs> but yeah okay I'm gonna stop chatting and actually get on with my day the plan is to finish throwing off glass and then as I said get a raincoat that is my mission today hopefully we can find one okay I'm gonna stop procrastinating tidy up this room and then head out and I will catch up with you tomorrow I did finish throwing a glass last night and I'm really pleased that I did and I really did enjoy this reread. Obviously we know I was tabbing it, I didn't add any extra tabs, just stuck with those ones and it was just a really good time. It's definitely got me back into the reader mood which is what I needed because in all honesty April so far has been very like lacklustre for me. Just in terms of the mood for me to read. The books that I've been reading have been absolutely fine but the mood hasn't been there and so because of that as much as I can look at the books critically and go you know what I liked that, that was a good book, it was really well done, I haven't been feeling that oh my god yes I want to read, I want to do this and that's kind of like killed it a little bit so as much as like I have liked the books it's I've liked them and not loved them as much as I know that I would have loved them if I'd been in that reading mood. So it's a shame but Throne of Glass has done exactly what I hoped it would do and kick me back into that reading mood. Really excited to be picking up books and just get going with back into my readings 
but it's just yeah I think every so often you can go through that sort of thing like where you do you just feel like demotivated to read in a way and I suppose because I read so much like I read every single day and well I mean actually maybe not every single day all the time that I do take a couple of days off every so often <laughs> um but I do I read a lot and every so often I just feel like my mood isn't there with what I want to read I don't know what I want to pick up and it's just yeah kind of what this month's been so far but this really did help kick me back into that mood as I've said I know uh, but yeah I'm, I'm really really happy with this reread it's been really good it's been fun and I can honestly say rereading this Selena really is somebody that's so annoying <laughs> it's a lot of telling us things rather than showing us but I don't know it's the nostalgia for me as we know I love this series and it really has put me back into that reader mood so that's been amazing so this week in this weekly vlog I mean it's a shorter one um but I haven't read loads it's literally been thrown off glass and finishing a thousand ships everything I've said about this one about it being a really good introduction to Greek myths but I didn't fully connect with this book unfortunately kind of stands the same and that's it we went blue theme this week love it love it when the books match but yeah that is it for this weekly read and vlog so i will be leaving it here because as we know i am going off on holiday i'm not actually in new york until saturday but tomorrow i am really busy and i'm just not going to get a chance and like i said editing wise and stuff just makes more sense to finish it today that's where i'm leaving it so thank you so much for watching i think the emoji of today is going to be a blue heart because you know blue books you kind of have to right uh, so yeah blue heart in the emo in the emojis below in the comments below <laughs> um and yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go and leave it there so let me know what you've been up to what you've been reading what do you do if you're feeling like not in the mood to read like you want to read but you're just not in the mood to pick anything up like nothing's sparking it do you do a reread or what do you do i was talking about this on my discord and a few people had different things so some of them do a reread of a favorite book some of them get a few different books and read like the first page or the first chapter which is something that i tend to do sometimes so yeah we're really interested to see like what are your tips for dealing with it when you want to read but just aren't in the mood and you have no idea what you want to read because that was definitely me this whole month it's like I've been wanting to read but I've not been in the mood to actually sit down and read the books on my TBR but at the same time I had no idea what I wanted to read so it's been a bit of a weird one we're at the end so next week is going to be the New York vlog but also a couple of reads in there so I'm really hoping they go down well so Yes, as I said, I am going to be leaving it here, so sorry for continuing rambling at you, but a blue heart in the comments below if you've made it this far, and thank you so, so much. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. Those three things are so helpful to helping this channel grow, and yeah. I think that's it. What do I say next? Aha, social media links. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below. And I will, of course, catch you in the very next video. 